Uh, Lisa McLaughlin comes to us from ISCME and OER Commons. Uh, she she directs OER Commons, which and and um, ISCME's OER technical services team. Uh, she's been working with OER since 2008, uh, and she got her start with Open Michigan, which is an initiative at the University of Mich Michigan. Um, and OER Commons, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, is a, an excellent. Uh, repository of open educational resources and a, a place for people to uh, find and mix and match uh, resources to produce things for their classes. So uh, Lisa, why don't you uh, take it away and tell us what you think of Wikipedia's coverage. Thanks, Pete. Thanks so much for asking me to join this conversation. I just uh, got caught up to speed with your last session. It was a really interesting discussion uh, about the open educational resources article. Um, so I guess to give a brief overview of, of my history, yes, I started um, my exposure to OER um, in graduate school. Uh, I was studying information science at the University of Michigan and I got involved with a group of students that were putting together a learner-centric uh, digital scribe model for students to um, sort of transcribe their courses and turn them into OER um, called Open Michigan. Can people still hear me? I'm seeing this waiting for application sharing to start message. Yes, we can hear you. That's, uh, okay. that's my error. OK. Uh, just um, pull up the, the, the website, uh, either OER Commons or the Wikipedia article about it, if you'd like. Um, oh, awesome. Great. Um, so yeah, that was how I first became exposed to the field and got involved in the process of thinking through um, OER on the publishing side and sort of how you create a movement um, within um, higher ed to get students involved in the practice of um, turning courses into OER. Um, and then sort of I can give a brief overview of my work at ISCME. So ISCME stands for the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. And we work in OER on a couple of levels. We've done quite a lot of research on OER historically. Uh, we started in 2002 and became involved in OER more explicitly um, in 2007. So we were a very early um, entity and sort of mover in the space. Our first work was through the Hewlett Foundation, um, a project to create OER Commons, um, which initially the vision was that we would sort of go out and collect all the OER that existed <laughs> on the web. Um, so at the time, that meant sort of having a research lens on who the Hewlett Foundation was funding in the OER space and keeping track of um, early OER uh, that was being created in a library. Um, and over the years, that's developed quite a bit. And now uh, OER Commons, we think of ourselves more as a network uh, for OER today than a library um, because there's been a shift as, as we've curated over time the massive amounts of OER that exist today. Um, there's a big focus now on quality of OER and I think that's, that's one thing that uh, is interesting to cover and think about in the Open Educational Resource article. It's definitely um, one of the debates going on as OER sort of comes into the mainstream the big question and some of the big pushback from publishers in, in, uh, in the space um, is that OER is sort of fragmented, it's too modular, it's uh, a very, you know, has varying levels of quality. Um, and so a lot of our work at OER Commons in the past couple of years has been focused on that question and thinking about tools. Uh, that can be applied to OER workflows and collaborative learning processes that can be applied to OER to sort of meet that quality question. Um, I think it's going to be one of the big questions that faces the field as it as it becomes more prominent. Um, so I think that's one interesting area to think about on the open educational resources article is that debate, um, along with a debate that was touched upon last time around sort of the question of how OER is defined in the different camps um, around that definition. So it's it's really interesting to see. Uh, one conversation I had recently with someone um, about that those debates heating up around the definition itself of OER um, was focused on the idea that that was a real sign that a field was sort of reaching um, 
maturity, uh, when you start to really see uh, fragmentation in the field or start to see camps um, emerging, that that shows that really something is coming into its own, uh, which is really exciting to see. And so in our role at OER Commons, we've tried to sort of remain semi-agnostic in terms of our curation strategy. So we've curated um, a range of OER. So from, uh, we look for content that's CC BY, that's, a, you know, the most open license that's out there, um, but we also curate content that has a range of um, Creative Commons licenses within the Commons to sort of showcase the range of what's out there. Um, and our recent curation work has been really focused on the K-12 space and sort of how that um, is beginning to develop and, and become uh, a bigger piece of the OER world than it has been historically. Uh, so that was touched upon too a little bit last time around policies that might would might be interesting to add around um, K-12 domestic education um, grant initiatives through the Department of Education that could be added to the policy section. Um, I think it's also useful um, in terms of thinking about sources for these pages. Uh, just in the process of thinking about being on this panel, I went back through uh, several Google Docs that I have around different handbooks and OER courses and guides that have been out there over the years. Um, uh, Pete had shared a, a guide last time, it looks like in the session, um, which is one that we had curated in OER Commons. Um, but I can think of 12 or 13 other courses and guides that have existed um, over the past couple of years around OER. I know there was one in Connections, there's one in Curriki. Maybe you already have those in your Etherpad. Um, but I'd be happy to share those, um, what we've got in terms of uh, educational, you know, OER guides that um, we've curated in the Commons, because um, I know there's quite quite a few, and those would be good sources um, in terms of thinking about this content. Um, in terms of what else we have at INSCME that might be useful, we through the research side of our organization, we, we did a number of OER case studies early on that might be less interesting to look at um, for some more historical reference um, that I can share. Um, and also an interesting source would be uh, looking at sort of events, uh, big field events. So every year the William, the Hewlett Foundation puts on an OER grantees meeting, um, which brings together a lot of thought leaders in the field. Um, and there's almost always a site, a wiki somewhere by the entity that's hosting that event um, that sort of tells you who's there, shares um, uh, what's going on, sort of the latest um, on you know, how Hewlett is thinking about the field. And that might be an interesting source just in looking at um, sort of who's been there over the years if you're trying to think about uh, organizations that might not be represented um, in the summary on the OER page. I know there's a lot of the big groups are there. Um, some smaller initiatives might be missing that that are really promising and interesting that show up at, the, at those meetings. Um, I guess I'm sort of jumping all over the place, but those are my initial thoughts. Uh, about things that, you know, might be helpful to develop or, or um, tools that students could think about or look at when they're looking at enhancing these articles. Certainly our own article on OER Commons is rather updated. It's a little embarrassing. I looked at it and, um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work in the last uh, year or so on this uh, OER publishing environment, Open Author, which um, is one of the coolest things we've got going on, it's got a lot of focus on inclusive design, it's got a lot of very um, cool, you know, in accessibility bells and whistles to it, which is sort of our way of dealing with um, one of the quality issue complaints around OER that I discussed, um, the, this idea that um, basically OER is in this, you know, less than polished format and um, when you get it, you know, you're going to have to do all these things to actually put together something that's ready for students or ready for teachers. Um, and so we built this authoring environment that has uh, sort of cutting edge accessibility features to sort of say, well, actually, we can make these OER environments so that they have a lot of things that, um, you know, traditional uh, commercial providers aren't providing at all in terms of, um, you know, platform accessibility, and that was one of our ways of working on that, but we haven't had time or, or thought at all about adding that to our, our page, mostly just um, out of busyness, but we'd be happy to have people look at 
uh, sort of our latest initiatives and um, enhance our page. We'd love for feedback on, on what we have so far. Um, you know, another interesting area that I, I don't know if has been touched upon in our article around our work is um, we, we're doing a lot of work now on internationalization of OER and looking at workflows for translating OER into, you know, across languages. We have an OER Commons Arabic project that we, I don't think we've shared on our site either. Um, but but is really our attempt to sort of dive into the issues of how do you create OER communities across the globe um, and deal with some of the translation issues that come up. Um, and so there was an interesting recent um, uh, mention by Hillary Clinton of the sort of promise of open educational resources before she left her position at the State Department. Um, and that's another interesting area where um, we're starting to see a lot of interest in internationalization of OER and sort of the role that OER can play in building global communities. Um, and that's not something that I really see yet on, on uh, the articles explicitly. Okay, I think I've, I've said enough. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Lisa. That's uh, you really you covered a lot.